Hello everyone, this is Madhusudan Raj and I'm your host. Uh, this is 2nd March 2013 and today I am uh, going to discuss uh, two important uh, events which you know took place in last week. The first was uh, obviously the uh, economic survey which you know government you know uh, put on the table of parliament and after that, that was on Wednesday and after that the annual budget of the present UPA government before there, before these two events there was the railway budget but there was nothing much to discuss with the railway budget so I skipped that one. Uh, economic survey and budget is uh, slightly important, not that important obviously because you know most of the, as I will tell you later on, most of the, most of the announcement in the budget are mostly proposed what we have to see is what actually happens but anyways let us begin with the analysis of economic survey which you know uh, government uh, put on the table of parliament last Wednesday uh, and some of its chapters were written by the uh, chief uh, finance uh, chief economic advisor of Manmohan Singh of finance ministry uh, professor Raghuram Rajan and the major highlight of this economic survey was, as the news items are saying, news reports are saying, uh, government likely to meet fiscal deficit target of 5.3%. Again, that is uh, likely to meet, so we will have to see whether they are going to do that or not. But the most important thing for us is how government is going to meet this, you know, deficit target. Uh, whether they are going to rein in the spending, you know, what they are calling fiscal consolidation, whether that fiscal consolidation is going to take place by reducing the spending, or they are going to increase the tax base and tax revenues, and by doing that, they are going to reduce the fiscal deficit, you know. And since my couple of last video analysis, I am constantly telling you all that no government in the history has, you know, ever reduce their spending you know if there are some exceptions I don't know about them maybe few governments but most of the governments they always like to spend money mostly because you know as Milton Friedman said government are in a position to spend somebody else's money on somebody else right when you're spending somebody else's money on somebody else you're most likely to not care about what amount you're spending and also you know, you're not going to be careful about what value you're getting for whatever money you're spending. So government is in this unique position of spending somebody else's money on somebody else. And, and we have to understand that these are all politicians and politicians are only there. Their, their only aim in life is to get re-elected, elected first and then, then get re-elected. So mostly and all the time their target is only voters, their own constituencies. So whatever they are going to do, whatever policies they are going to follow, these all policies are basically uh, directed towards winning votes in the end, right? Capturing as many votes as possible. So all this spending is all basically based on their wins and their objectives or winning most and uh, most uh, votes. Nothing else, right? Development and growth and uh, social welfare. These are these are all smoke and mirror to fool you know the public and you know, to show them that they are very serious about all these issues. But the underlying fact is this that the ba you know the basic nature of government is this that these are politicians and they like to get elected and re-elected and for that they will do anything and everything. So uh, before you know why I'm saying all this thing before uh, because uh, before the budget and before the uh, economic survey was presented you know many of the people in the investment world mostly the financial world they were thinking that government is somehow going to rein in the spending bring down their deficit by doing that instead of that as the report is saying government is trying as I'm saying since quite a long time they are just trying to increase the tax base increase the Revenue, you know, if I use the right word, then increase the loot from the taxpayer, and they are not at all serious about cutting their spending. They just want to increase the tax base, and by doing that, they they are thinking that they are likely to bring down the deficit. So, what the report is saying? <clears throat> report. Uh, the report said uh, more tax income was needed. You know, as I say, it is better to achieve fiscal consolidation partly. Uh, through a higher tax GDP ratio than merely through reduction in the expenditure to GDP ratio in view of large and development 
needs again as I said these development needs are just more campaigner just an excuse for winning votes right running all this fiscal uh, running all this welfare policies cash transfer subsidy and you know unemployment programs like Narega and G Naregas etc these are all uh, uh, front faces you know in the background something else is going on you know as I said they are just interested in winning votes so they are not interested in cutting their spending they want to increase the tax GDP ratio, higher, higher tax GDP ratio, that means we all are in trouble. And that's what actually happened, as we will see in a while in budget. Uh, Finance Minister Chidam Burham did not reduce his spending. In fact, his spending went down and he basically lagged so many different kind of taxes on common man, you know, people like you and me. Uh, another thing which is very important is the this thing. The report said for the reigning in half the fiscal deficit, which, which hit 5.8% of GDP last year, would create room for more accommodative monetary policy. So they are not, you know, uh, just going to stop there. What they for their doing is, you know, uh, what they think that once we achieve this fiscal consolidation, once we increase the tax base and narrow the fiscal deficit. Then are we are we able to have further uh, room for loosening the monetary policy? That means creating more inflation. So you know right now what is happening is RBI is in a kind of a tight corner. You know they have painted themselves in the tight corner. They cannot increase the interest rate to rein in the inflation. They cannot decrease the infl you know, interest rate because that will create you know more and more inflation. But they are actually doing. They already you know printing money every day at a very rapid pace. But at least they're saying that they are, their main concern right now is very high level of inflation. But these people are saying that once we achieve this in a consolidation, we are going to give some kind of room to RBI for further loosening the monetary policy. So far, uh, you and me, my dear viewer, we have no respite from this inflation. You know, in fact, immediately after the budget cut, uh, they increased the uh, price of petrol by something like 2 rupees 1.40 you know rupees of the difference 2 rupees and again uh, just you know a couple of hours back they announced uh, that uh, bulk diesel price has also gone up by some couple of rupees or something like that uh, the report recommended further carbon gold imports to narrow the current account deficit you know and to reduce the current account deficit they think that uh, people importing gold is the culprit so they are going to you know do something about it. They already raised the duties to six percent from four percent, and they are trying to create all kind of you know a, a phony paper gold schemes and all which I analyze in my past analysis. And I'm frequently warning you to stay away from all this kind of so-called financial paper instrument because they are just paper promises. Continue to accumulate physical gold and silver, but RBI is against that. You know, I think now they are also make it mandate, made it mandatory for the dwellers to ask for uh, the buyers, you know, bank card uh, if they buy more than fifty thousand rupees worth of gold. So they are they are cracking down on gold because they think that's the problem. And in fact, a few days back uh, yesterday, Chidambaram also pleaded to people that they should stop buying and reduce you know gold buying but as I said it's all stupid you know why people are buying gold because of inflation and who is creating inflation uh, government and RBI itself but in any case the most important thing in this economic report was uh, this that uh, Raghuram Rajan as I said the chief uh, the lead author of that report he said that uh, uh, the stimulus packages which government and RBI announced uh, immediately in the aftermath of aftermath of the 2007 uh, financial crisis uh, are responsible for the current situation, the, the kind of problem in which the Indian economy is finding itself right now. Right, so he's saying that um, uh, in the in a cogent introductory to the survey, Dr. Rajan analyzed the causes of the recent slowdown by highlighting three objectives that need to be implemented. Appointing the causes for the slowdown, Dr. Rajan said, a number of factors are responsible. First, to, first the boost to demand given by monetary and fiscal stimulus following the global financial crisis was large, even though the economy was already reaching the limits to its potential growth before the crisis. So he is accepting that the stimulus packages, you know, stimulus packages means the inflation which they created by pumping and printing a lot of money out of thin air immediately after the financial crisis of 2007, at least, 
if, you know, if you see my blog entries, then I have, you know, listed all this, you know, stimulus packages, at least uh, three to four of the stimulus packages, big ones they announced uh, after the uh, financial crisis started in 2007, in 2008, 2009, and 2010. Which, you know, obviously resulted into this mess, you know, as I said, you know, money printing will result into many different kind of problems, not just, uh, it is inflation itself and not, it is not only going to increase the prices, it is also going to distort the capital and production structure of the economy. Uh, which is going to result into this boom and bust cycles and also the economy is crashing right now. These phony growth numbers are coming down from 10% to 5% which, you know, uh, economic surveys also project, you know, it was last year that they are projecting 6% or something like that for the uh, of this fiscal year 2013-14. Why is that happening? Because they created that artificial boom. Why are those stimulus packages? Why are those money per day? And now the economy is going through that correctionary phase, recession, bust. If they will not allow that, this bust is going to become, recession is going to turn into depression. And that is for sure because they are still, RBI is still looking to print a lot of money. So they are going to create, you know, this depression out of this recession. But they are saying they're accepting, you know, at least the chief economic advisor is accepting that the stimulus packages are to be blamed for this current situation. But what he's doing after that? If that was the case, then they should be, you know, doing something with the RBI. And who is responsible for the stimulus packages? You know, RBI, right? The Reserve Bank of India was the enabler, right? They are the ones who are providing this punch ball, right? If the party is going on, then the punch ball has been provided by the central bank, by the, by the RBI. They're printing all this money and giving it to banks and giving it to the government to spend out in the economy. But even after all this thing, accepting that stimulus package is very responsible, they are not blaming the RBI for that, right? Rajan is saying that while not holding the RBI directly responsible for its action to control inflation, the survey pointed out that falling savings without a commensurate fall in aggregate investment has led to a widening credit income benefit. It has nothing to do with saving and investment. It's all, you know, uh, saving and investments are further down the road. The cause of this crisis is obviously RBI's money printing, inflation which they are creating. That is what is hurting the savers. And that is what is, you know, siphoning off the investment also, right? That is what is putting this economy into trouble. But central bank RBI for this mainstream economist is a sacred cow and it's a percent they are never going to question its policies. I remember in one of the conference, you know, I asked one RBI official that, uh, you know, does he think that RBI is the main cause and he was saying that you are blaming the doctor for the ailment, you know, he think that he, he was thinking that economy is kind of a patient and, you know, economy is ill and uh, RBI is the doctor who is curing that ailment, right? In any case, that analogy was wrong itself, and but this is what is their mindset that RBI, the central banks, cannot do anything wrong, right? They are kind of doctors who are trying to cure the economy, but they are obviously, you know, fooling all of us. Either they are mistaken, they don't understand economics, or they are knaves and they are fooling all of us. Because central bank is the enabler, is the major cause of this boom and bust cycles of inflation and everything. So as you know, unless and until you are do, going to do something with the central bank, right? You know, either you are going to control it somehow, but you know, as I said, that is not possible. You have dismantled the RBI. You know, if you change the monetary system and the whole status quo, only then the problem will. You know, get so all, and then the situation will improve for better. Otherwise, if you're going to play in the status quo, then nothing is going to happen, right? So that was a major take from uh, the uh, for, uh, uh, from the um, economic survey. And after the economic survey, Chidambaram Finance Minister Chidambaram presented the budget, and it disappointed everybody. And many people are saying that it was a political budget. So what do you else expect from the government? Obviously. Politicians are going to present a political budget, right? Expecting anything from these people is kind of height of optimism, right? Investors were, as I said, expecting that it is going to rein in the spending, government is going to rein in the spending, and they are going to give some kind of boost to the investment. Nothing like that happened, and immediately after the budget, the stock market crashed by something like 290 points. BSC Sensex was down by 290 points, right? Uh, so this report is saying that 10 reasons why Sensex ended at 3 month low 
And the major reason they are citing is increased spending. Mr. Chidambaram had proposed to raise government spending to 16.65 trillion rupees against expectation of a closer check on spending to curtail the fiscal deficit to 4.8% of GDP in fiscal year 14, 13, 2013 and 14, right? So, as I said, they are never going to do that. And uh, they are also, you know, talking about quality of spending. So, all this spending is also going on, you know, uh, or, uh, welfare activities, so called. Government is not going to do any productive thing because they cannot do it. Government is a pure consumption sector, it's a parasite, obviously. So, again, if you're expecting anything productive, anything creative from the government, again, then I think you're very naive, right? Uh, they also impose a lot of higher taxes. And there were a lot of, you know, ambiguities about that Mauritius, you know, tax haven problem, some kind of wording was changed and that spooked the investor and that was the reason why the, you know, the stock market crashed, right? <clears throat> but not only that, not only he uh, uh, increased the spending and increased the taxation as he was you know, already hinting, you know, uh, uh, since I think quite a couple of months that he is not going to, you know, bring in the spending. Right, I confuse the foreign investors also as I said that uh, some GAR issues, Mauritius problem. Yes, another big one was uh, he and again I was you know talking about this that the, he's going to tax the very super rich people and he did in budget 2013. Rich taxpayers to pay 10% surcharge. So he levied 10% surcharge on uh, those people who are whose you know annual income is more than 1 crore rupee and he's saying that this is just for one year and he is citing uh, the main kind of uh, inspiration for him was uh, Azim Premji and Azim Premji is India's Warren Buffett right in America they have this Buffett tax proposal and all these rich people, they don't understand this businessmen, they have business acumen, but they don't understand economics, right? They don't understand that when you're diverting all this tax based money to government, you're just wasting society resources, you're just feeding the beast. Instead of that, we need to starve the beast, right? But as in Premji was saying that you should be doing that, rich people can pay something, you know, when the economy is in trouble. But, and he took, uh, he, he was, you know, very happy to apply and he, uh, and immediately after that, all these taxpayers, these rich people were not happy and and uh, they were kind of troubled because of that. And I don't know in the future, maybe we see some kind of exodus from these rich people, you know, outside India because I, Chidambaram is saying that this is temporary measure, but I remember all the government measures are temporary to begin with, but they never go out of picture, you know, because they create bureaucracies and carrier bureaucrats. So once the bureaucracy is in place, once the, once that particular policy is in place, it's very hard to roll it back. So very, because in future economy is not going to improve, economy is only going to deteriorate. So it is possible that they will have to continue to, you know, tax these people and maybe the 10% surcharge can go up to 20% and 25%, you know, who knows, you know, maybe like France, 75%, you know, super rich tax. So it's, it, it is likely to persist, likely to be permanent measure, and uh, I think uh, the Indian economy is going to, you know, be in trouble. As I said, India, India, you know, the budget is mostly about spending and higher taxes, right? That is how they are going to uh, reduce the deficit, but I'm sure it is not going to help them much. <clears throat> uh, I gave you the figure, total budget expenditure will rise by an unexpectedly high 16% in the fiscal year that begins on April 1 to 16.65 trillion rupees, even as the fiscal deficit for the current year will fall to 5.2% of gross domestic product, besting a revised target of 5. 3%. So it is higher. And added surcharge on local funds with income over 100 million rupees and a 10% surcharge on individuals with taxable income more than 10 million rupees. Right? So more taxes, higher spending. Basically, we are screwed. Government is going to screw us more and more. Um, not only that, uh, I think if you remember carefully, before this budget, they were talking about cutting military spending. 
And I, I told you at that time that that is never going to happen, right? Because, you know, that is the major expenditure. And in fact, forget about uh, cutting the military spending in this budget. They hike the budget allocation for the, for the defense ministry. Uh, defense ministry gets 14% hike in budget allocation. In the midst of a major modernization drive, the defense ministry today got a 14% Hike in its budget as Finance Minister P. Chidambaram gave it RS uh, 2,3672 uh, crore rupees for fiscal year 2013 and 14 with a promise to provide any additional fund required for national security. So it is never going to happen. Military budget is never going to get cut like what is happening in US. In US also this sequestration drama is going on and they are talking about cutting their spending, but they raise the spending, you know, let's say, suppose, you know, this year's spending is 100 rupees, and next year's proposed spending is 200 rupees, and they say that we are going to spend only 150 rupees, so 50 rupees of spending cut. But actually, if you, if you compare it with the past year, then it's actually an increase of 50 rupees in the total expenditure. So that's just fooling people, right? They are, they are never going to stop spending money, right? They are just going to create inflation and boom and the cycle. Uh, also, middle class is in big trouble. Uh, middle class will pay more. Why? Because uh, uh, you have to pay more now if you eat outside because they are, you know, putting 12% more expensive. Um, uh, we are not talking of the off-market ones. Climate control eating out will become at least another 12% more expensive. So they put some kind of taxes on you know, service tax, you know, on a restaurant, if you go and eat outside, if you talk on mobile phone and uh, then also you have to pay more, uh, they have to, you have to pay more if you are watching entertainment, so they levy some uh, duty on uh, set-up boxes, first they digitize the whole cable services and forcing everybody to buy the set-up box and now they increase the price of set-up box, right, you have to pay more if you are traveling, you have to, you know, pay more if you are, you know, buying a kind of a car. You know, he increased duties on uh, sports utility vehicles, SUV cars. But any case, you know, as I said, it's just, you know, trying to increase the tax base and trying to increase the revenue instead of cutting your spending. And uh, people are basically uh, kind of, you know, they say that it's kind of very really let down and kind of really not very... Really you know, important budget. And as I say, you know, expecting anything from these people is always going to result into uh, disappointment and disillusionment in the end. And not only this, Chidambaram is saying that, remember, um, this budget is not final and more is coming in future. Chidambaram cites challenge economy for dull budget, assured of more measures while passing budget. So this is just a proposed budget. Now they will debate on this budget and in the end uh, they will vote on it and then they will make it in you know, a kind of an act or legislation so a budget is just you know income and um, you know expenditure account of the government most of the policies they will uh, announce in between and during the course of the year so we have to keep an eye on those policy measures also like yesterday increase the price of petrol and diesel like they're going to do many things, right? They they also increase, uh, I think, import duty on silver. So I'm sure in future all these actions are more higher spending by government means uh, economy is not going to improve. You know, the boom and the burst cycle will continue. In fact, right now they are inflating a big real estate and all of sector bubbles, and when that bubble will pop in the future, we are going to get into a lot more trouble, right? So. And this increased government spending is again, as I said, going to exacerbate our problems, right? <clears throat> and uh, in the end, uh, if you're not paying taxes, because you know the government is very kind of desperate right now, right? They are they are on a looting spree right now. And if you are if you are not going to pay them, then they are going to come after you. You know, many people come and tell me that well, taxation is actually voluntary, right? They won't put a gun on your you know, head and ask for your money, but you know, I kind of feel kind of totally perplexed at how people can think taxation is voluntary, you know. You have to understand that taxation is simply robbery, period. 
nothing else, right? And if you are thinking that taxation is robbery, then you, you should read this news, you should read this budget proposal. I'm just, I'm just reading it for you right now. Budget gives room to tax officials to crack the whip. Defaults on payment of service tax, excise and customs duty could result in stiff penalties and even imprisonment. Stiff penalties and imprisonment. Finance Minister P.T. Dumbarton has promised a non-adversarial tax administration. In his speech, the budget 2013-14 has proposed strict measure against tax evaders, right? So on one side, finance minister is saying that, no, no, it's going to be very simple, very easy, I'm not going to trouble you. But on the other side, his proposals, you know, he's writing in the budget, is saying that if you are not going to pay up, you have to face strict financial, you know, uh, punishment and even imprisonment. That means this is coercion, this is physical aggression against our private property, against our body and our uh, wealth. So this is nothing but robbery. In fact, highway robbers are much better than the government because they are they are they are going to leave us alone once they will loot us for one time. But government will never let us alone. They will keep on looting us time after time, right? Every year, every month, every day of the year they are after us. So as I said, if you think that taxation is voluntary, then it is not. Remember, right now, government is, you know, Indian government is bankrupt. They don't have any resources. And this politician would like to win their votes. And for that, they would like to spend money endlessly. They are right now constrained because RBI cannot print money because inflation is very high. And so they are increasing taxes, you know. But increased taxes are not going to result into higher energy for them. So they will become more desperate in future. And they will come after us. They are going to, you know, devise all kind of tricks and tools and everything by hook or crook. They will try to do this all. So we will have to take care of our, you know, personal finances and don't get fooled by governments. You know, different kind of financial instruments. They are they are announced with a lot of measures like uh, index, inflation index bonds, and you know this Rajiv Gandhi equity scheme. But these are all paper promises, you know, if you go and invest your heart and money into that, then, they are, then it is sure that they will lose, you, you are going to lose them. Because these are all paper gold, paper, you know, uh, investment schemes, you know, what they call financial investment. You have to stay away from that, you have to continue to accumulate physical assets, like as I say, you know, physical gold and physical silver. If you're going to trust your government, then you're going to kill yourself. Alright, so I guess, you know, this is what I want to tell you, if you, you know, as I said, don't, don't expect anything better from the government because they cannot do anything, you know, good, they are not a productive sector of the economy, they are the pure consumption, parasitic sector, and obviously they are hungry right now and they are going to suck our blood more and more, we have to be careful, and we have to just protect ourselves and our wealth from this, you know, hungry, looting government. All right, so you take care over there and I'll see you, you know, in future when some important news will be there. All right, so thank you very much for watching me. Good night.